Hi there. Now in this tutorial I want to show you how we do algebraic long division. I've got an example here which I'll show you how to do and then maybe you might like to have a go at this one. But before we can do something like this I want to take you back to basic division with numbers so that we can understand the methods involved. So I've got this one here, divide 63,210 by 5. Now one way of doing this would just be to do 5's into then 63,210. Now if we're doing it by short division, we'd do something like 5 into 6 goes once because once 5 is 5 and that leaves us with 1 left over. We'll put that against the 3 to make 13. What do we multiply 5 by to get as close as we can to 13? It's going to be 2. 5 twos are 10 and that leaves us with 3 left over. Put it against the 2 here to get 32. What do we multiply 5 by to get as close as we can to 32? It's going to be 6. Okay, 6 5's are 30, that leaves us with 2 left over. What do we multiply 5 by to get as close as we can to 21? 4, because 5 4's are 20. That leaves us with 1 left over. What do we multiply 5 by to get as close as we can to 10? Well, it's exactly 2. Now, not too difficult, I hope, but I want to show you now how we can set this out by a different method, same answer obviously, but the method we're going to use is long division. And so we'll do exactly the same sum. We'll do 5 then into 6, 3, 2, 1, 0. 63,000 then 210. So, running through this again, we say, what do I multiply 5 by to get as close as I can to 6? Well, it's 1. Okay? But this time, we do 1 times 5, which is 5, and put it underneath here. And we take away the 5 from the 6 to give us the remainder. I know up here we could see instantly that it was 1, but that's not the point that I want to make here. It's the layout. So 6 take away 5 gives us 1. And that 1 there was what we carried across to the 3 to make 13. But with this style, what we do is we bring down the 3 and we write it against the 1 to give us the 13. And we start again. We say, what do we need to multiply 5 by? to get as close as we can to 13. It's going to be 2. So we put the 2 there and we now do 5 times 2 or 2 times 5 obviously it doesn't make any difference giving us 10. Okay so put that underneath there. We now subtract to work out what the remainder would be. 13 take away 10, 3 just as we had here. We carried that 3 across to the 2 to make 32. So we just bring down the 2 and we now have 32 and we start all over again. Now you might like to pause the video at this point and just carry on with this question. So I'll give you a moment then just to do that. When you come back you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back. Let's see how you carried on with this. So we just say, what do we multiply 5 by to get as close as we can to 32? Well, it's going to be 6. So we just do 5 times 6, which is 30. We take away to find out what the remainder would be. So 32 take away 30 is 2. Bring down the next digit, which is the 1. Bring it down to the 2 to make 21. What do we multiply 5 by now to get as close as we can to 21? It's 4. So we do 5 4s are 20. We now subtract again to work out what the remainder is. 21 take away 20 is 1. 
bring down the next digit, which is the 0. That gives us the 10. What do we multiply 5 by to give us the 10? It's 2. Don't forget to finish off here though. We do 5 times 2, which is 10. We take these away from one another and that gives us the remainder, which is 0. OK, same answer, obviously, as we had up here, but a different style. OK, it looks a lot longer, but we're going to need this style now when it comes to handling these kinds of questions, if we're to do it by algebraic long division. So we'll just border that off there. So let's have a go at this one here. Divide x cubed minus 5x squared plus 8x minus 4 by x minus 2. So let's just put this down here then. We're dividing the x minus 2 into all of this polynomial here. x cubed minus 5x squared plus 8x minus 4. So as we did before for this one, remember we said, what do we multiply 5 by to get as close as we can to 6? Well, it was 1. Well, with this type of question, what we do is we take the x and we say, what do we multiply x by to get x cubed? And that has to be x squared. So we write that up there. And then remember, over here we did 1 times 5 and we wrote the answer down underneath here. Well, in this one, we just do x squared times x minus 2, and we write the answer underneath here. So x squared times x is going to be x cubed, and x squared times minus 2 is minus 2x squared. When we had done that, we subtracted to find out what the remainder was. So again, we now do exactly the same. We subtract. We've got to take care over this, though. We've got x cubed minus x cubed, so that's 0. But here, in this column, we've got minus 5x squared minus minus 2x squared, which is minus 5x squared plus 2x squared, which comes to minus 3x squared. OK, so that's our remainder. And then, like in this example, we brought down the next character, the 3, OK? Well, we bring down the next value, which is the 8x. So we bring that down there, write it in against the minus 3x squared, so we've got plus 8x. And we start all over again. What do you multiply the x with to get minus 3x squared? Well, it's going to be minus 3x. So we write that up there. And now we multiply minus 3x with x minus 2. So minus 3x multiplied by x is minus 3x squared. And then we've got minus 3x times minus 2, which is going to be plus 6x. We now subtract to find out what the remainder would be. So we've got minus 3x squared minus minus 3x squared, so that's 0. And then we've got 8x minus the plus 6x. 8x minus 6x is 2x. And then what we're going to do is bring down the minus 4 and carry on. You might like to, again, just pause the video at this stage and finish this off. I'll give you a moment to do that. OK, welcome back then if you did carry on with this. So what we do then is we bring the minus 4 down. So we just put that there, minus 4. And what do we multiply x by to give us 2x? Well, it's plus 2. 2 times x minus 2 gives us 2x now. 2 times the minus 2 is going to give us the minus 4. And if we subtract these, we see they're exactly the same. That gives us 0, no remainder. It also tells us that x minus 2 is what we call a factor of x cubed minus 5x squared plus 8x minus 4 because it goes in exactly. It leaves us with no remainder. 
Okay, well, I hope that's given you some idea on how to do that. So here's another example for you to try. Divide x cubed plus 9x squared plus 17x minus 15 by x plus 5. So again, I'll give you a moment just to pause the video. When you're ready, come back and you can check your solution against mine. Okay, welcome back then. See how you got on. So with this one then, I'd set up my x plus 5. We'll have x plus 5 here. And we're dividing then this into our polynomial of x cubed plus 9x squared plus 17x minus 15. So we just say, what do we multiply x by to give us x cubed? Well, it's x squared. x squared times x plus 5 gives us x cubed plus 5x squared. We now subtract to find out what that remainder is. So x cubed minus x cubed is 0. 9x squared minus plus 5x squared is 4x squared. So got 4x squared there. We now bring down the next term, which is in this case is plus 17x. So you've got plus 17x there. What do we multiply x by now to give us 4x squared? Well, it's plus 4x. So put that there. Now multiply 4x with x plus 5, and you get 4x squared plus 20x. We subtract to work out what the remainder is going to be. 4x squared minus 4x squared is 0. Now we've got 17x minus plus 20x. So that's 17x minus 20x, which is minus 3x. We bring down the next term which in this example is minus 15. So what do you have to multiply x with to get minus 3x? Well, it's minus 3. And if we finish this off by doing minus 3 times x plus 5, you get minus 3x minus 15. And again, subtract to work out what the remainder is. And we find that we get minus 3x minus minus 3x, which is 0 minus 15 minus minus 15 is 0. So there's no remainder. And so that tells us as well that x plus 5 is a factor of x cubed plus 9x squared plus 17x minus 15. So I hope you've been able to follow my methods here. Now in the videos that follow, I'll show you how to handle further ones like this where certain terms in our polynomial are missing, how we lay them out. But essentially, it still follows much the same kind of method.